Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. And in the process, we need to prepare disciples. In the process of what's happening in this world, we need to prepare for Yeshua's second coming. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. So Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, is speaking to the Israelites and he tells them, There'll be one coming like me. God will raise up a prophet. You must listen to him. What he's saying is, according to the Hebrew text, there's someone greater coming. You must listen to him. And we know that this refers to Yeshua, Jesus, God. This is very important because if Moses was teaching the Israelites that there would be a prophet greater than he is, and they must listen to him, referring to Jesus Yeshua, then there needs to be many things in the ministry of Moses to resemble the ministry of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. Because everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. And if we want to understand the back of the book, we need to understand the front of the book. Very important to realize that to a Jew who doesn't believe in Yeshua, in Jesus, God, Moses is the great lawgiver. To a Jew who doesn't believe in Yeshua, it's always Moses, Moses, Moses. And for this reason, Moshe and Moses tells the Israelites, and he tells the Jews today that don't believe in Yeshua, that I'm not the greatest. There's one coming greater. You must listen to him. Referring to Jesus, Yeshua. In the book of Numbers, God informs Moses that he's about to die. Moses has already set the platform for a prophet greater. Very important for us to understand this, and very important for us to be a witness to the Jews who don't believe in Yeshua. In the book of Numbers, chapter 27, verses 12 to 14, God informs Moses that he will soon die. Let's see Moses' response. Numbers 27, verse 16 to 17. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation. Who shall go out before them and come in before them? Who shall lead them out and bring them in? that the congregation of the Lord may not be as sheep that have no shepherd. So we can see that Moses is not concerned with the fact that he's going to die. He's asking the Lord to appoint someone to be the leader of Israel. He's worried about the congregation. And thus we can see in the ministry of Moses a foreshadow of Yeshua HaMashiach, who lays down his life for the people, who is the good shepherd. Remember, Moses was preparing the congregation by telling them there will come a prophet from among your brother, you must listen to him, setting the platform for the coming of Yeshua, Jesus, God, who died on the tree on the cross for our sins, rose on the third day, and by his blood, all who repent and believe have salvation and eternal life. So we can see here, Moses' main concern is Israel being left without leadership, someone to care for the people like a shepherd cares for his flock. This passage reveals a lot about Moses' heart. He truly loved the people of Israel, and he wanted to make sure that they were taken care of. Who did God appoint to lead Israel in Moses' place? We'll keep reading Numbers chapter 27, verses 18 and 19. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man whom is the spirit of leadership, and lay your hand on him. Make him stand before Eliezer, the priest, and all the congregation, and you shall commission him in their sight. So we see here that God appointed Joshua to be Moses' replacement. But the question has to be asked, why was Joshua chosen? We know that Joshua was Moses' assistant. We read this in Exodus chapter 24, verse 13. In Hebrew, it says he was a disciple of Moshe, of Moses. He spent time with Moses, learning from him, and growing as a leader by studying Moses as an example. If anyone was equipped to take over Moses' leadership position, it makes sense that it would be a close follower of Moses who assisted him in his ministry, his disciple. Moses submitted to God's authority, and we know that he laid hands on Joshua and transferred the position. But the Bible's clear. All of us have fallen short of the glory. But through him, through Yeshua, we become righteous. And even Moshe and Moses had struggles 
We read this in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, verses 23 to 29, and I'll paraphrase. The Moses was struggling with God's decision to let Joshua lead Israel into the promised land instead of him. Although he was struggling, he submitted to God's authority. Moses poured his life into this mission, and now he has to transform the mandate. Ultimately, Moses came to terms, and he understood that it's not about him. It's about God's purpose and God's kingdom. He continued to teach the people as we read in the book of Deuteronomy, but eventually he gave everything over to Joshua. And Joshua then led the people into the promised land. There is a big difference between someone who's building God's kingdom and someone who's building his own kingdom. If someone is building their own kingdom, there is no discipleship. And when they die, their ministry is dead. The congregation falls apart. But if someone is building God's kingdom, Yeshua's kingdom, then they recognize that it's not about them, that we're small people with a big God, and it's all about Yeshua. And God can take them in any minute, and that's okay. Why? Because they have equipped another generation, another Joshua to lead, a Joshua generation. That's why it's so important to make disciples. There's a lot we can talk about in this account of Moses transforming the mandate to Joshua. In fact, Joshua in Hebrew is Yehoshua, and Yehoshua actually means he will save. So we can see that from the time of Moses, Moses says there'll come a prophet. You must listen to him. He transforms the mandate to Yehoshua now. Joshua means he will save, and it's a foreshadow of Jesus, Yeshua, bringing us into the promised land, the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. There's a lot we can talk about here. It's all a foreshadow, just like Joshua Yehoshua brought them to the promised land. As a foreshadow, Yeshua, Jesus, brings us into the eternal promised land. And as we're preparing ourselves for his second coming to make it to the eternal promised land, the sanctification process, we must equip leadership. This is why Yeshua said, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. We are to make disciples, just like Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, made disciples, and Joshua was able to carry the mandate. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to you faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And in the sanctification process, we must also make disciples, so we can rest assured that the kingdom work will continue. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2, 15, preach the gospel, Bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, Jesus. Her Yeshua like a blazing torch. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat. Sending you blessings from Jerusalem, Israel, in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Ye Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Yeshua, Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua is Lord.